Hey guys, David here and welcome to the FitPro Daily. This week is all about sales and we've got a returning guest coming to talk to us today for this week's guest interview. In fact, it's Stuart McKenzie and this time he's coming to talk a slightly different area of the sales subject. But before I do dive into today's guest interview, if you haven't subscribed, press pause, press subscribe and then let's dive into today's episode. Hey guys and welcome to today's episode. Today we've got Stuart all the way from sunny Liverpool. Is it? I'm guessing it must be quite sunny. Near Liverpool, it's the Wirral. <laughs> it's, it's raining here, so if it gets really loud, apologies for all the all good, rain or hailstone. So uh, this is your is it your second or third time you've been back? On second, the, yeah, second time. But you know, it's definitely it's definitely your third. So I'm sure you've been on twice to talk about sales before. So yeah, it's either the second or third. But anyway. Well, we're going to talk about today. So it's slightly different to chasing the leads or doing the phone call leads. You want to come and talk about how to sell uh, better high ticket or how to increase your prices and all this type of stuff, yeah? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's one of those things where for me right now, I think there's, the trend of selling high ticket has come around again. Like there's a lot of a lot of idiots out there, you know, sort of gurus who are kind of – drawing people into the dream of high ticket so i kind of wanted to go through how you can actually avoid that scenario or that scene but confidently increase your prices and what actually means to sell high ticket and and how to sell a more expensive program uh because ultimately i think i think too many people will fall for it again um you know a, a high ticket sales script being the thing that allows them to um, charge higher prices for their services and whatever else, but in reality, it's it's something in, you know entirely different. You don't just if it was as simple as having a high ticket sales script, we, we'd all be incredibly rich. Um, but the statistic of the amount of trainers that leave the industry is incredibly high. So there's something missing there, isn't there? Really, I, I see it all the time. It's just like oh, I've just got qualified as a personal trainer, and now I'm going to charge one thousand pounds for a six week program. Like, wow, just qualified and you're now yeah. going to start charging a thousand pounds yeah some people do it but on the we're going to build on it but let's go right back to the start briefly super quick for anybody that doesn't know how did you kind of get into the fitness industry yourself um so i it was one of those things in sixth form whatever else all my mates were applying and going to uni i i was one of the, i was only in sixth form because my mates were in sixth form i had no idea what i wanted to do didn't really want to do any more education. And the only thing I enjoyed doing was going to the gym. Um, And I saw people being paid to train other people. And that's where it all kind of kicked off for me. I thought I might as well earn a bit of money whilst I'm in the gym. So I'll get qualified. Um, From there, I was a PT in a commercial gym. Um, Gym owner, online coach. And then came out of the industry about two years, 2000, beginning of 2019. And now you're coaching people to get better at sales or you're, you're taking people on to sell for them? What, what is your current setup now then? A few, a few different things. So we've got the sales agency, obviously, where some people will hire us to take over their sales calls. So that was where it all came. That was my first way of getting out of being a PT. Um, it's, going, it's going very, very well. Um, I think up to date now, we've done over 3 million in two years for clients. So we've closed through over 3 million for, for the clients that we, that we sell for. Uh, and then in the process of that, because of the agency being out of reach for quite a lot of people, or it wasn't really a good fit for a lot of fit pros, I was teaching people to get better at selling, how to craft better offers and, and do all those various different bits, earn more money and all that kind of stuff. And then now I also coach on a one-to-one uh, basis around just simply growing their business from everything from their offers and their sales and their processes and all those kind of various different bits and bobs as well. So yeah, heavily involved in the sales side of things, but sales is kind of one, one small, very important piece of, of the whole pie really. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm involved in right now. That's true. Okay. So let's, let's kind of go right back almost to people maybe getting started or people who are changing up their offer and they've decided to, or, or they're not sure what price to go with, because they like say people are saying, yeah, you should be charging £1,000 for 12 weeks, so you should be charging this or that. And they're just yeah. seeing these numbers. How does somebody actually kind of work out 
what they should charge for a service. To be fair, if you're brand new, I don't think there's any shame or any problem with training a bunch of people for free for a very short space of time first so that you have proof and evidence of what you do works. So let's just take that as an example. Let's say, for example, you work with five people for free. There's six to eight weeks. It's a good amount of time to keep them motivated and not be too long that they then drift off. Maybe ask for a deposit, you know, a hundred quid deposit. If they stick to the program, give them the money back or something, you know, whatever. Um, from from there, like if you're trying to figure out what I want to charge or what should I charge because I'm brand new, et cetera, et cetera. The, the way that I would kind of look at it is if you are brand new, then your your needs for revenue may be a little bit lower. Maybe maybe you're a little bit older. Maybe, you know, you, you've changed your career in your 40s, you you're getting into PT, whatever. That might be slightly different. But let's just go for the basis of it's a brand new PT. Um, I would look at what you need to earn to survive and, and pay the bills and kind of work backwards from there. Because let's say, for example, if you you need to earn fifteen hundred pounds to pay your bills and and put food on the table, and look at how many clients could you physically handle right now, then kind of figure out your price point from there, and that might be slightly different to what everybody else kind of looks at. It says, oh, you know, see what everyone else is charging, charge what you're worth, all that. But that means nothing. Charge what you're worth. You're not worth anything right now because you you haven't got any clients, or you've now helped some people for free. So you can prove that you've got results. I don't think anybody should be charging any less than £100 a month. I don't care how new new or seasoned you are in the industry, any less than £100 a month for one-to-one work. Let's say if we are talking online, for example, then you shouldn't be. You know, 25 quid a week for, for someone to work with you and all the stuff you deliver, it shouldn't be any less than that. So find yourself a start point and then say to yourself, every you know five to 10 clients, I'm just going to, increase my prices a little bit because if you take on five clients and they work with you for a month you're going to have results you're going to be able to prove that you can get people results so the next five people that come along charge a little bit more 120 quid a month or something you you know that's where i would kind of go about it figure out what it is you need to earn to survive figure out how many clients you can handle work around your average sort of price point there and build up the job is of the, the goal the goal is obviously not to survive but you're not going to just jump into the industry and just go, right, I'm going to charge 500 quid a month and I'm going to get 20 clients and I'm going to be, you know, six figures, all that bollocks. It's just not the way it's going to work. Not, not many people are going to have that sort of confidence. So that's the way I would do it. Really simple way. Look at what you need to survive. How many clients can you handle? Base an average price point off of that. Work with people for free if you need to. Yeah, that, that, that is, that's kind of the easiest way I would say. Like you say, you work out what you need. So if you need £5,000 a month to survive and you want to work with, 100 clients and you know you need about 50 quid per client yeah, per month yeah. to achieve that and then the next point you said i think that's a massive point for anybody if you're not sure on your prices sell to 10 people at 50 pound or whatever it is to begin and if nine out of 10 people sign up in yeah by a fiver and then just wait until it's like 50 50 and then you know you hit that ceiling you either get better at selling you work with someone like Stuart or you can't really charge much more and you might need to change your service or offer up again. 100%, yeah, absolutely. Like I say, there's, there's, no, there's no like complicated science to it. Like charge something. If everybody's saying yes, then it's a good indication that you can charge more. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it really does become, you know, it, it's as simple as that. Um, if, 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 if everybody says no, then it's an indication you need to have more proof or get better at selling. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you say, when people start saying selling no, don't don't blame the product or blame yourself. You have to look at the whole range of things, what you offer, yeah, yeah. your proof, your sales ability. Was it even the right clients that you should even be talking to? Okay, yeah. so we've decided on the price. We've started running some ads. We're getting people showing interest. How would you generally start a sales sales process you phone them up or you message them or how do you start the ball rolling uh, to, to be fair, to be fair, i think it depends what you've you've got in place um getting people on a call is always going to be the easiest way like in an ideal world i'm sure the way we would love to have it is they would see an ad they would opt in they would go into an email series they'd get warmed up they'd go to a sales page and then they'd purchase on a sales page that can happen but i mean you, you need a very large budget especially to hire the copywriters and all those kind of things to 
make sure that it all works properly. So let's just rely on the easiest skill in the world, and that's just communication. Uh, speak to them, uh, have a good conversation with someone, and, and show that you are the person that can that, that can sort of help them. So yeah, one hundred percent, it would definitely be a call. Um, follow up messages and everything else pre uh, pre call is is obviously going to be beneficial as well. So. Um, yeah, I just don't think anything's going to be able to beat the conversation uh, ever. You're always going to get great results from from talking to people on the phone. Cool. So let's pretend that we don't know the price yet and we're going into this conversation. If we're charging £20 a month and then we've also got a programme that's £500 a month, is that sales conversation going to be dramatically different? Or do you think <sighs> ask the same questions? To, to be like for me personally like okay i'm probably not gonna be on the phone with someone for 20 quid 20 pound a month or something but the, the, the I, I personally don't believe that there's any especially if you're good at selling and you understand the process whether you're selling something that's 500 pound or 100 pound the conversation is going to be pretty much the same for me personally the only thing that might differ is it is almost sort of the positioning of it. You, you kind of, it does help if you were in more of a specialist area to be able to charge more, but let's just take purely fat loss and just generic fat loss as an example. You, it, The conversation may be different with a more expensive program based around the, the proof that you may have of it. Maybe you will dive a little bit deeper into their pain points but it's, it's not going to be some psychological manipulation battle that is the reason why you're going to be able to charge more. You just need to, like, if you're going to charge more money, you need someone to be 100% all in on what it is that you're selling. But in the same light, you need someone who's going to pay you £100. You need them to believe 100% that they're all in. Like, okay, 100 quid's more of a punt than £1,000. But at the end of the day, if someone's going to give you a hundred pound, they need to be fully convinced that you're the person, that you're the coach. So it's selling something for a thousand pounds just as hard as selling something for a hundred pounds. Unless you're good at selling, both is easy. Mm, cool. So I wouldn't treat them too differently. And that's why that's why it winds me up when you get these high ticket sales scripts, like as if there's something totally different to just a normal sales conversation. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because um, a good sales conversation will sell it any price point and that's kind of what i was going to go on to next about this process the the whole the whole way of selling it so you you say the conversation's kind of the same no matter on the price point but the actual process do you need to ask specific questions to open people up to want to to buy bigger programs or again do the questions kind of flow the same yeah to be fair i think if you're asking the right questions anyway it doesn't matter It, it really doesn't matter would we go into, you know, in terms of the way that I do sales calls, that um, if we've got, you know, a front end offer, say if it's 100 quid, uh, you know, 150 pounds for, for a trial. I say, yeah, we'll take that as an example. Um, so one of the, the gyms that I consult with, work with, I train their team uh, to get better on the front end sales and the back end sales, 149 pounds for a front end program. The structure is nigh on identical to the people I've helped and coached in sales when they sell a two and a half thousand pound program. It's exactly the same framework. All you might do is open up their answers a little bit more. So if, some, if it's a £149 program, you say, okay, well, you know, what exactly is it you're struggling with right now? What is, what is it you really want to achieve? Um, they might say, oh, I just want to lose a little bit of weight. Oh, okay, cool. Can you just explain what, you know, how much weight you're looking to lose? A stone. Okay. What problems does that kind of cause you right now then? What, you know, why do you want to get rid of You know what I mean? You can ask really simple questions. You don't have to dig too deep. But maybe if it's a higher price point, you might just expand a little bit on it and say, right, okay, so in, in what other areas of your life does this affect you then? How does it make you feel about this? How does it make you feel about that? But it doesn't have to be anything super spectacular. Like at the end of the day, the thing that's going to make them want to purchase from you is the 100% conviction and belief that you're the person to help them get those results. That, that's what it's always going to come down to. Specific questions aren't going to matter. It's their belief around whether you're the person who can get the results. What can you do to show them that you're the one that's going to do it? Yeah, 100%. If you're, if you're doing, if you've got cold leads coming in and you're trying to sell a, a 1,500 pound program, you might have 30 calls and, you know, three people might buy. 
then yeah, you're probably going to have to have some crazy bloody script that's been, you know, uh, done the works over with scientific research and whatever else, that, you know, whatever you want to call it. But if you're working with people that know about you, have seen the work that you've done, if you've given them the ability to see some of your stuff, then you're not gonna, you're not going to have to do that. You're not going to have to twist the knife in and twist someone's arm and put them in the metaphorical headlock to want to purchase and pay more money from you. You just show them the proof. You show them you're the person, you're the coach that can get them results. That's what's going to make people want to buy, whether it's hundred quid, whether it's a thousand pound, whether it's ten thousand pound. Yeah, and again, that's that's mass massively key. It's like you don't see a brand new car company come out, and you don't see the adverts on TV or on the bus stops or on the adverts and everywhere before they launch it, they're already telling you about it. So when you come to purchase it, you know, and like you say there, you're not calling somebody completely blind where it's like, how do you even get my number? I've never heard of your business before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they've submitted their details, you're kind of building them up ready for that phone call. So it's like, oh, Stuart, I've actually been expecting your call. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, I've been following your stuff on Instagram. I've seen your ads. I've seen a few of your ads. I've got your emails, you know, all these various different things. But it's like, let's say, for example, with, with the services that you, that you provide with Facebook ads, the reason why you know i would pay you to run my ads is because i've, I've got the evidence of what you've done for the coaches yeah that's what sold me it's not the price point it just so happens it's going to cost me xyz do, do you know what i mean so if you can prove you have enough evidence of what it is you do for businesses for example that price point won't matter <laughs> like it, it wouldn't matter you'd have to convince me just as much or you'd have to show me just as much proof whether it was, you know, a thousand pound a month, whether it was ten thousand pound a month, or whether it was, you know, two hundred quid a month. At the end of the day, if I'm going to invest and spend money, I need to know that it works. That that's what that's what means you can up your prices. If you the way to up your prices is by having endless amount of proof. The the less spaces that you have for your services, as long as you have proof, you can charge more. Like you said before about you know charging an extra fiver or, or going up ten pound every five people or whatever it is. As you get more and more clients. If you know you can only work with 40 people, you've got 10 spaces left, you should be, you know, hitting towards the top end of your sort of yeah. price points. Now, if you're fully booked or close to being fully booked, or you just have endless amounts of social proof and evidence, if you're charging, you know, 200 pound a month now, and so technically that's 600 pound for 12 weeks. If you've got proof, there's no reason why you couldn't go, you know what, I'm going to start charging 800 pound for the service because I believe it's worth it. Charge what you're worth. That number doesn't fucking exist. Like what you're worth is what someone's willing to pay in essence, really. So, okay, it's 600 pound right now. I'm going to charge 800 quid for it. Someone says, yes. Okay, it's worth 800 quid. Over time, I'm now going to increase it to 1100 pounds. Well done. You're a high ticket, you know, you're a high ticket coach now. You've just sold something that's high ticket. You know, that, that, that's basically all it is, something over a thousand pounds. So the guys that I went with that charged two and a half thousand, they didn't start off at that price point one of them was 150 pound a month and he was struggling to sell at that until we worked over ways to handle objections and, and show evidence and all these various different things. He increased it to 600 pound for 12 weeks. He went from 600 pound. He was getting, nobody was saying no to him because he was really good at selling. He, was, he had loads of proof. Everybody was buying it. So we just doubled the price purely because he didn't need any more clients in theory. Doubled the price. Again, he was getting barely any, uh, barely any resistance, barely any objections. So we doubled his price again. And now he does get resistance, but he's still doing 10 to 15 sales a month. But you'd rather, you know, do you know what I mean? So there's, there's ways around becoming high ticket and it's from the evidence of what you can provide as a service. That was one, one of the biggest things when I initially got started, I, I followed this particular guy who Stuart knows as well. And he was saying charge 997. And I thought, yeah, let's go straight in. And I eventually got to like £1,200 for the 12 weeks. It was almost like £100 a week. And I yeah. got to a point where only like two in every 10 were buying. And I was like, I know it's worth this amount. And and it was just getting at me and getting at me and getting at me. And I thought, yeah. you know what? I'm going to scrap this. Yeah, he's told, he's told, said I should, this is the amount. I can't charge less than this. But the minute I charged less and I had the amount that I was comfortable charging, I was making like nine out of every 10 sales. I wasn't feeling yeah. down. I wasn't hating myself. I was still providing the same type of value. And eventually I was probably making even more money because more people were signing up. So you, I yeah. should saying you don't have to go like silly rocket money that because some guys told you who that who's never owned a gym before you need to be yeah. with what 
you feel happy charging and then build it up gradually. Yeah. At the end of the day, high tickets not to be all and end all. Like there's, there's people that have an incredibly successful business charging 150 to 200 pounds a month. Like they've got 40 to 50 clients charging that price point. Try telling them that they're doing it wrong. They're not. There's no right or wrong way of running the business that you're confident and comfortable with. Yeah, there's always going to come a time where you might think, you know what, I do need to increase the prices a little bit. But it doesn't, you don't have to charge thousands if you don't want to. Like just because some little gimp on Facebook is telling you that you should charge two grand because you're worth it and you know all all this like you don't you can charge what you want you really can just charge whatever the hell you want as long as you feel happy with the results you're delivering and the progress of your business like if you can't sell a 150 pound a month program you have no right thinking you can go to some guru and start charging 1500 quid all of a sudden you need to be able to sell it at 150 first and you need to be able to show proof mm. so that people will then pay a little bit more for it. There's no rush. There's no rush to charge huge amounts of money for your, for your business. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think too many people fall into the trap of it. And, 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 and again, if a high ticket sales script is all that it took, why do they give it away for free? Why do they give away, you know, our secret strategy to high ticket leads flowing daily? Like, if it was that simple, why isn't everybody doing it? And why isn't everybody super, super rich? And it just doesn't make any sense. It's a gimmick. It is a gimmick that dry, that draws a certain type of person in who is looking for that quick fix. I'm not saying everybody is, but that's what it does. There are a lot of people that go into these programs and are very, very, very successful. Don't get me wrong. They charge a lot of money and they do incredible things, obviously. But that is another thing. It takes a certain type of person to be able to, like you said, two out of every 10. It takes a certain type of person to be able to take that because they know they'll do 50 calls, meaning two out of every 10, that's 10 sales, which could be 15 grand a month. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'll smash that. I'll just, I'll knock out those calls all day, all day, all day, it, you know, day in, day out. You've got to have a certain type of mentality for that. Mm. And not every personal trainer has it because they didn't come into this to be a salesperson. They came into it to be a coach. Simple as that. That's that's my kind of outlook on it anyway. And what you're saying there, people also need to realise that these hooks, these things that these gurus and other people are saying is kind of almost what you need to do with your ads. I literally wrote a post about this this morning. Nobody's scrolling along on Facebook to want to join your gym on a 36-month contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah, scrolling yeah. through Facebook because they're wasting their time and then they see you're offering a six-week programme that could help them lose up to one and a half stone in six weeks. And it's like short, sharp, it's a hook. It gets them interested, they're in. So when you see people doing this, again, there's nothing wrong with them saying, download my free sales script that's generated me 4 million in sales. That yeah, is yeah. a hook to get your attention, to pull you into their funnel. Just know at the end of that funnel, there will be a payment button that you will pay <laughs> yeah. to be able to get the stuff that you want. Yeah, so yeah. everyone does this. Okay. Somebody new then doesn't have all this experience and wealth of success and everything like that, isn't charging ridiculous money either. Should they maybe have some sort of presentation or something when they do maybe a call or a Zoom call to try and help show off that they are rel that they have had some sort of success or it looks professional? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's no, there's no harm in it. Uh, one of the so one of the the courses that we we still do sell for now. When I first started them, we did a presentation, like, it, and it works. It's a longer process, and I, I do think it depends. I, I think with the fitness side of things, it can work. But if you're brand new to it, I would maybe have, I'd maybe set up a testimonial page or a case study page that you can send them prior to the call yeah. rather than on the call just because it can just draw in too many questions and pull you off your like flow or your process of speaking with them do you know what i mean um so yeah have something set up whether it be a presentation or a, a case study page or whatever um so that i've booked you know i'm going to be speaking to you a little bit later on david um around you know around the program here's a link that you can check out some of my clients results uh, things that you know frequently asked questions all of those you know it just helps it's it's a bit of social proof so one of the things i'm doing after this podcast i'm on a call 
with a copywriter who's going to be creating me a case study page so that I could send it to people mm. prior to calls. Do you know what I mean? Like it's one of the things that I'm going to be doing um, because it helps. It's one of the main reasons that helps persuade people to say yes. Proof. Yeah. And on that topic there where you were saying that when people start going off into a tangent, you need to realise that they're going off on a tangent and you have to pull them back. Yeah, yeah. Before you know it, you're going for a coffee with them to chat about something else and not join your gym. So if someone starts yeah. wandering down this path, stop it, get them back on track. Okay, so we've we've asked the right questions. We've been super excited about the programme and it's coming off really well and it's saying, okay, Stuart, now, okay, it's uh, it's... £150 for this 30-day trial. Um, I'm going to send you a link. Or, Stuart, can you give me your long card number? Um, how, how? What is the best way of taking payment? Yeah, it, it's always going to be taking payment over the phone. Like, it just always is. If you can get payment there and then, you know you've got them secured. Um, if you can't, if you can't take their payment details, if they want, you know, yeah, you're going to want to take their payment details on the, on the phone. It's just always going to be the best way. If if for whatever reason they're not comfortable with giving you their card details, which I find to be a really strange one nowadays because people hand over their card details just willy-nilly now that I don't think they really care as much. Even though protection and data is, you know, higher than ever, I've never found it easier to take people's card details. They're just happy to give them. If they're not, just have payment links available that you can send to them that they can then use on the phone there and then. Nine times out of 10, if you leave the call and send them a link, they probably won't purchase it. Um, now, again, this is something that I'm com- I'm trying to combat right now is there, there's like a trend with other business coaches or, or mentors, whatever you call them, where it's all about like, you know, you don't want to pressure people to buy on the call, let them think about it, let them go away and do it. I mean, it's, it's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. That, that's a great way of doing it. But a lot of these people, are speaking from the point of view of already having a fully booked business so they can take or leave a sale. If you're brand new, get them closed because the last thing you want is to be the nice person that just let 15 people walk away and think about it and you only end up with three sales rather than 12. Because if, if that is the case and they're based in Cardiff, I can 100% guarantee Holly will have snapped them up if you let them go. <laughs> and that's another point because if you don't, someone else will. Yeah. If they've come to you for help, give them the opportunity to do it and get them closed because otherwise one of the competitions is going to do it instead. Yeah. So again, we, we, it, it's so, when you can get them in the gym, it literally, it's so much easier. If you're a yeah. gym and you can get them in the gym, it, it, it reduces so many barriers instantly. They see you, they, they can offer them a coffee. You can just relax them so much yeah. more. Yeah. Like if Holly is having to take a payment over the phone and they're not comfortable, it literally says, okay, can you just load up on your iPad, dk9fitness.com forward slash 159. Great. Now just enter your long card number. Okay. Now I do that. Press pay. Okay, I've just seen your payments come through. You're in. Let me send you a link to our Facebook group. So like you say, you you don't yeah. want them to go away and like, oh, let me send you the WhatsApp message with a link because they will block you and then you yeah, 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 yeah. again. It, it's having conviction. It really is. Like you, you don't need to feel weird or dirty or or cautious about asking for their card details. Like they buy things all of the time. They enter their card information on sites they've just seen for the first time they 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 do it you know what i mean like people aren't afraid to pay for things anymore so if you go in cautious and a little bit hesitant around asking for card details they ain't going to give you them yeah like i I tell them so so one way to combat that is when we get down to the the point of it is say you know it's 149 pounds you say uh yeah yeah that's fine i want to sign up okay perfect so the way that we do it is we'll take payments i'm going to take your long card number expiry date three on the back send you an email, blah, blah, blah. So you always explain it. And then at the end of it, you say, you know, long card number when, you, when you're ready, when, you, when you're ready then, please. You've led them to it. There's an expectation that you're taking them. It's not asking, you're just taking them. Once they've agreed to sign up and pay, well, how else do they expect to pay? You're going you're gonna to have to give me a card details. So you lead them to the path of taking their details. If they don't have their, they probably haven't got the card out and ready. But if you get, you know, you get to that point, you say, I'm going to take your name and information, your email address, payment details, long card number, blah, blah, blah. Long card number when you're ready, please. They'll probably go, oh, two, two seconds. Let me just go grab my, let me just go grab my card. And they'll just do it anyway. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you don't have to feel icky about taking people's card details. They're, they're used to it. 
they do it all the time. Okay, so again, going back to this mentor from many, many years ago, the aim yeah, was yeah, to, yeah. to crush them, to yeah, yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. and then sell. Um, and obviously when you crush them, sometimes you, you can take it a little bit far when, when the tears comes and stuff. But how <laughs> yeah. far should you be fighting for this sale? Should you go that far? Should you really try and push it or like you say the people who are just too worried about making that sale they just let them yeah. kind of just vanish and they've lost that sale how far is too far to fight for this sale for me personally if i feel like i've got to convince i'm giving it up because they ain't going to be a good fit for me if i've really got to twist their arm and convince them to do my program are they really going to do the things i asked them have i brought them in for the right reasons um have I, have I let them make a decision or have I forced them into a decision? Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're in it purely for the money and you want to be a hardcore closer, get them closed any way possible. But if you're trying to grow a coaching business, a service-based business, if you, if you get to a point where you feel like you're really having to fight with them, just, just give it up. Just give it up and, and, and not bother because otherwise you're going to give yourself a bad reputation or you're going to leave a sour taste in your own mouth from, from some of these calls and you're going to get yourself into a hole. Like there's a difference between giving someone a nudge and uh, reaffirming some of the things that they said previously as a way to not change their mind, but show them the light and yeah, twisting the knife and telling them how, you know, how bad their life is. And uh, like, cause I've had it before. I've been on calls with some of these people and they've said that I'm, I'm a loser and I'm always going to be a loser because I won't give them my credit card details what makes you think that's going to change my mind really yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what I mean um, but it's a case of I'll I'll give people like I'll try and build them up like I will try and build them up but it's not from a place of crushing them it's from a case of where we've already built them up from like we know what we, we know what they want to achieve so it's a case of okay well you've told me you want to achieve this this and this so if we don't change that what's actually going to happen and where do you see things going in the next six months if you don't change it my job is not to convince you it's to give you the opportunity to achieve the results that you want. If you don't want to, that's fine. I just need to know and understand mm. that that's the case. And it puts it on them to just make that decision of, you know what, no, this is just not for me. Perfect. That's fine. Honestly, that's fine. I'd rather them tell me I don't want to do it than me force them into purchasing. Yeah. My business is going to live and die by the results that I get clients. So I need to make sure I give the right people the right opportunity. That, that, that's the truth like if and we have it all the time with facebook ad clients with gym clients with any sort of clients the minute they ask they start asking 10 15 20 35 questions uh, like uh, what colors the carpet in the gym and stuff you're like no this has to end now because yeah. they're asking you really random questions on the program or service you know these questions are going to come <laughs> once they've become a client and it, it, yeah yeah it's going to be super difficult. So yeah, fight for it as much as you can. But if you have to desperately convince them, then look at it with look at it with the Facebook ad side of things. And and, and we've had conversations in the past about about specific people that do this type of thing. But let's say for example, like you would know that if 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 I'm inquiring about your ad service type of thing, and I've got three thousand questions, and I'm also messaging you at 1 a.m. I'm messaging you at 5 a.m. I'm messaging you like, when are my ads up? When are my ads up? How many leads have come in? How many leads come in? Blah, 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 blah. You want to minimize, you want to minimize as many, many of those people as possible, don't you, realistically? So if you get that sort of inkling or you feel as like, you're not going to try and convince or force me into purchasing because you know I'm probably not going to be a great fit. Someone else can deal with me. So don't just sign people up for the sake of the sale and the money. Be picky. It, it's important. <laughs> Really the, other, the other thing I would say in this topic as well, if you unfortunately do sign someone up that is like this, refund them quickly. Honestly, get yes. out of your business. If you've if you've signed them up and that first session you thought, oh my God, I can't believe this person is this crazy. <laughs> just just is it is the most difficult conversation you have to have. But be honest, I know we've had our first session and you might have enjoyed it, but I just don't think it's going to work out. It is a tough one, but honestly, it will save you so many headaches in the long run. Yeah. So many headaches in the long run, yeah. 100%. And you want people you can showcase. You want people that you can get referrals from and all those various different things. So if someone is a 
does seem like they're going to be a nightmare. It's better to refund quickly than spend seven, eight, nine, ten weeks with them and then them say this is terrible. I'm leaving. I don't want to refund. Yeah, it, it, you'd re- you'd rather that. Oh, I can't believe you can't believe you won't let me train here. Type thing. You'd rather that than your gym's a load of garbage and I hate it and I hate you and I hate everyone else involved. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And if, if you are just getting started, then your first or second client is like this. Don't don't think. Oh, I'll just man through it until I get more clients don't, in because don't. it it will it will drag you down mentally. You're going yeah. to sales. You that next sex salesperson, the next sales consultation. Once you've just trained that client and your head's massively in the wrong place, and you can't sell to this person because this person in the back of your mind is still hammering you with everything. 100%. So, uh, okay, so to finish off then, is there any final tips or anything on pricing, um, charging, kind of what your what your what worth? you wear? Yeah, um, yeah. Honestly, or anything else? Honestly, I think it all comes down to like it, it, it don't don't fall for or don't assume that a high ticket sales script is going to be the thing that saves or grows your business. The script isn't what's going to do it. It's you, your service, and the evidence that you provide for that. If you're someone that wants to increase your prices increase your prices but don't think you have to start charging thousands and thousands of pounds for it if you want to build your way up to it if you're currently charging what would average out at around five six seven hundred pounds for 12 weeks go for it like give it a go but only if you have evidence and proof that's going to be the best way for you to increase your prices there's no harm in increasing your prices every if you're starting low every five to ten clients add a little bit extra on there's nothing wrong with that it, it's it's a process you're just gradually increasing your prices until you have started to get resistance charging what you're worth that is literally what you're worth is what someone's willing to pay you but that that's you know that that's ultimately what it comes down to like it's almost for, that feeling inside as well if someone yeah. says, you need to charge two thousand pounds like even now if someone says i need to charge two thousand pounds for clients to come join my gym i wouldn't feel great inside to want yeah, to yeah. charge that but and there's nothing wrong with that yeah, it doesn't make it doesn't make you any less of a coach if you don't feel as though you can charge two grand. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like again, try telling, try telling David Kyle that he shouldn't that he shouldn't be charging what he's charging because it doesn't work. Clearly does. Every price point works. Every <laughs> price point works as long as it's what you want and you can make it work. Charge charge whatever the hell you want as long as you can provide proof. Yeah, and you've got to look at the range of cars. You can get a really, really cheap car make, or you can go to Ferrari or Bugatti, and there's such a difference in... And it's not about the different... They're not better at sales or anything. It's just how everything's built up. So you're yeah. expecting to pay this amount when you go to a certain car shop. When you go to a lower-end car shop, you know it's going to be much, much cheaper. So yeah. You have to be that person in yourself. If you want to charge higher-end don't turn up in just a random piece of clothing that you've just picked off the line. Make sure you're in fully kit. It's all branded the same way. You turn up freshly shaved, proper haircut, with a, <laughs> with a welcome pack and everything. So it shows instantly that it's worth that amount. Last thing you want is to bring someone on. You've sold them for a £1,000 on this 12-week programme or something, and they leave empty-handed and confused because yeah, yeah. it's like, whoa, I'm paying this amount. This is a high amount, and I'm not really getting not getting the amount. not getting the luxury sort of service. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, but you, you're never going to be the fact like you, as a coach, you're not defined by a price point. You, you're not like people call themselves high ticket coaches. Like you're not. You're a personal trainer, or you're an online coach, or you you know you're a fit pro, you're a fitness professional. At the end of the day, you're defined by the results that you get clients. Yeah the demand and the supply is what's going to dictate your price as long as you're doing everything right. So if you want to increase your prices, increase them, but just don't think a high ticket sales script is going to be the thing that allows it. Cool. Stuart, I appreciate your time as always. If somebody wants to know a little bit more about, um, I was going to say high ticket sales scripts. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> wants to learn how to sell better at a price they're comfortable with, whether it's getting their sales team on board and having a chat with you, or maybe getting you to do their sales for them, where 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 do they go? To be honest, um, as always, I always just direct people towards my Instagram. Just follow me on Instagram, Stu underscore Fit Pro Sales, um, and just see what I'm writing interact with my stories and if you feel like you want me to have a chat with you at any point then just let me know literally as simple as that follow if you like what you see i'm sure we'll have a chat at some point
And this is somebody who doesn't need the sales. When you, when, when you sell it like that, it makes the clients want to do it even more because it shows you're not desperate for clients, but it's now getting them intrigued. Like, why is Stuart not forcing this hard sell on yeah, me? Yeah. I need to go and check it out now. And then you'll, you'll reach out, Stu, and you'll be good to go from there. So um, I mean, that, that's it as well. Like, the way I sell my own stuff is not the way that I teach other people to sell. <laughs> if you come to me, you'll get on the phone, and I'll probably tell you to have a think about it and then come back to me when you're ready. Um, because, like I say, I'm not in no rush to force people to do something. So if they want to work with me, they'll want to work with me. But, yeah, follow, have a listen, have a watch. If it's worth, if it's worth your time, then come and speak to me. As <laughs> simple as that. No worries, mate. I appreciate your time again. Thanks for coming on. And uh, we'll probably see you in a couple of months. Yes, I'll speak to you, mate. So that was Stuart. And you could really see how we both kind of have similar thoughts when it comes to sales, sales scripts and high end selling. As usual, if you loved the episode, make sure you do subscribe, make sure you comment below and let us know what you think. If you want to reach out to Stuart, feel free to reach out to Stuart. Or if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, do let us know in the comments below. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Cheers.